People want to get upset. You know, you hear people say, well, I, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit before you ever preach. And, and, and people that's never spoke in tongues say, well, I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. No, they're not baptized in the Holy Spirit because if they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, the initial evidence is the speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Amen. You can be full of the Holy Ghost, and them preachers may be full, and they may be full and full and full, but when you're baptized, there is an evidence. Amen. Just like there's an evidence when you really get saved. People say, well, there's not an evidence when you really get saved. Yes, they are. If any, it, it, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If that person says they got saved and they still got the old nature, old self, old self ruling, they're not born again. Amen. There is an evidence when you get born again. And there is an evidence, a, a physical evidence, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk to you about that this morning. This tongues is so controversial. I was a Baptist, raised in a Methodist church, S had public profession in the Baptist church, told the Lord, I, I want what my wife's got. She got baptized in the Holy Spirit, this little Baptist girl. I want what my wife's got, but I don't want those tongues. I said, Lord, I'm a Baptist, and Baptists don't speak in tongues. And God said, really? <laughs> I want to show you something. In, in 1 Corinthians 14, I want to go there and then we'll, we'll go to Acts if we got time. 1 Corinthians 14. Look at somebody say there's more than one baptism. It says baptisms. And you know, people that believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they believe in the laying on of hands. And the Lord doesn't baptize everybody in the Holy Spirit through laying on of hands. He can fall on people. I read about this missionary that was in, uh, had been in Africa for 30 something years and she came back to New York and the noise and everything was so upsetting to her. She went in a hotel room, stayed about seven days, and then she decided she's going to church and she looked in the, in the, in the yellow pages and found there was a little church a couple of streets down and so she come out of the hotel and went to the church. And they gave an altar call and people came down to the altar and the pastor said, take all these people downstairs and, and pray with them. So after the service, she came up and talked to the pastor, said, I'm a missionary, been on the mission field for 30-something years, and said, uh, I, I just want to come and, 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 and be in a service this morning. He said, well, come on downstairs with us. So they went downstairs. They were praying people, praying for people to be saved, leading them to Jesus. They were praying for people to be healed over here, and then they were praying for people to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And, and so she is watching them being prayed for for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and they start speaking in another language. And somebody said, well, you, you, you got the baptism, you got the baptism. And that woman from Africa, they'd been a missionary to Africa, standing there and said, is that what that is? Since I hear them speaking in tongues, is that, is that what that is? Is that tongues? Is that what they're talking about in the Bible? They said, yeah. She said, I've had that for 30-something years and didn't know what I had. Said, when I went to the mission field, said, I got so discouraged, I wanted to quit. And said, I told the Lord, you're going to have to do something for me and give me strength to stay here. And she got down and got to praying, and she said, Lord, you're going to have to help me because I don't want to stay here. And she said, I started praying in this language. And said, I thought it was just to help the Lord sin. I didn't know it was called a baptism in the Holy Spirit. So you don't have to know what you got. You just need to know who you got it from. God gives it. It ain't the devil that gives it. God gives it because the devil don't give no good gifts. Hallelujah. Let me read this to you in 1 Corinthians 14. I, I want to read verse 18. Now, how many know Paul was a pretty good guy? He says, I thank my God I speak with tongues, what? More than you all. What does that mean right there? That Paul spoke with tongues probably more than anybody that he'd ever ministered to because he prayed in tongues a lot. You see in 1 Corinthians 14, it talks about two manifestations of the Holy Spirit in tongues. Two manifestations. 
One is private. The whole the discussion about it. One is private. There is a private devotional tongue that God will give any believer that desires a baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now the problem is a lot of times when people pray, they think the Holy Spirit's going to speak through them. He's going to get. He's going to. He's going to do the talking. And the, and 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 really, if if we can understand it, we speak and the Holy Spirit gives the utterance. You understand what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, when they prayed for for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they'll stand waiting on the Holy Ghost to speak through them. We begin to speak. God begins to give the utterance. You understand what I'm saying? It said, and they spake with tongues. So there are two manifestations in 1 Corinthians 14. One is personal tongues. Personal edification. He that prayeth in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. You understand what I'm saying? When I'm praying in tongues, I don't need an interpreter because this is a private manifestation of the Holy Spirit in my life to build me up. It does so many things. In Jude 20 it says, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, either one you want to call, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, same person, person, same person, third person of the Godhead. So when we pray, it is private, private tongues. There is a public tongues. It was manifest this morning when I stepped up to the pulpit. It was a manifestation of public tongues. It was God speaking through me to the assembly supernaturally. When that happens, if somebody obeys God, or I would have given the interpretation if it didn't come and I got the same one you got, hallelujah, same. <laughs> It's, there is an interpretation given. You understand what I'm saying? To the assembly. So that is a public manifestation. And some people say, oh, you can't, you can't speak in tongues. You can't pray in tongues unless you've got an interpreter. You don't, that person does not know the Bible. They're trying to be an authority in something they don't understand. It would be like me going to Randy Whitworth's garage in the morning and saying, you ain't fixing that car right. He said, well, you know how long I've been doing this? I said, no. He said, 40, 50 years. He said, what do you know about cars? I said, well, I don't know nothing about cars. Somebody just told me you wasn't doing it right. Do I look foolish? I sure do. So there is a public manifestation of tongues. The people that are telling you that don't know what they're talking about because they're ignorant of this. Because they are ignorant, ignorant, Purposely. They purposely are ignorant. They're willfully ignorant because they don't want to go in this area. They don't want to walk with a supernatural God. They want a God that they can control, that their leaders can tell them what God does and what God don't do. Who gave them the authority to do that? They don't have it. So there is public manifestation of tongues. All, both Private and public are edifying. If they're not edifying, sometimes a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge will come through tongues and interpretation. These gifts, these nine gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12, they connect many times. And sometimes you hear a message in tongues that is a warning. And that is a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. you got three operations of the Holy Ghost there. You understand what I'm saying? So, you, 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 people say, well, I'm, a, I'm afraid of tongues. Well, ignorance has made you afraid of tongues. 